All right, sorry, my transition lenses got all dark because I had to step outside for a second, but that's not what this is about. This is a video game vlog, and I'm going to try to get some of this done because I know my husband will be calling me back in a little bit. But I need to talk about video games because I am late to the damn party on several different topics. So let's just start with the Resident Evil movie trailer dropped like two, three weeks ago. I know, I'm late, but I... <sighs> I wanted to openly state up front, I am not angry at the Resident Evil movie trailer. I'm not one of these fan kids out here that's biting on the side of a couch all mad at some shit because it's not 100% true to the, to the verbatim story of Resident Evil. I told y'all last time we talked about this that it's never going to, we're never getting that exact story. We will never get that exact story told in live action form. I know it's disappointing. I know it's not what you want to hear. I know it's not the thing that should be done, but we're never getting that exact verbatim story. So you're going to get some grief counseling about it because that's just how the shit is done. We're just going to get what we're going to get. But with that being said, I think if you want something faithful to that, I think a you will have to change shit around or not make any money off of it, but you're gonna have to get a bunch of fan kids together and make your own movie. I'm sure it can be done. They've made movies on iPhones and cell phones and shit. That's what you're gonna have to do. It's not gonna get made. If you want that exact 100% down to the ground verbatim story, that's what you're gonna have to do. You're not getting a, a Hollywood whatever like that. So with that being said, I am actually not particularly mad at the fact that they're trying to stay more faithful to the story. I can do, I can live with a faithful retelling than what the fuck that Mila Jolovich et al. bullshit fuckery fest we got for all them other Resident Evil movies. I can live with a, a, a more faithful, it's not 100%, but it's closer than what we got with Alice and them bullshit so oh lord like my thing is i'm not gonna cover all of the trailer because like i said i saw that when it like not when it dropped but like pretty much the day that it came out and i wasn't like i remember looking at it like okay it, it's it's fine <laughs> pretty much i was like it's fine I, st I still say i am hesitant to say it's going to be good because it's still, at the end of the day, Constantine films, and they were the ones who were doing the Mila Jolovich, Paul S. Ander, SW, what the fuck ever, Anderson movies. So I'm still a little leery about it, but as a whole, I'm, I'm still, oh, that's him, I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that, sorry, and I completely derailed my train of thought. It's like 30 minutes later, but I think I was talking about my grievances that I don't really have any real beef with the Resident Evil movie. My thing is this. I'm going to blanket statement this. I think I'm okay with the movie the way it is. No, I don't think that it should... I don't like the way the guy that looks like Leon. I don't like the way Leon looks, but whatever. They didn't ask me for casting choices. And honestly, I ain't had no casting choices, so what the fuck ever. But I don't like the way Leon looks. I don't like that they they shipped Jill and Wesker together. <laughs> Stop yourselves. And, like, my concern for the Resident Evil movie is the amount of fan service that I see going into this. Like, somebody on Twitter pointed out there's, like, a clip where somebody's walking down a hall and it was, like, a poster of Kenneth, Ken, not Kenneth, I always want to call him Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh is an actor. Marvin Branagh is the last black man in Raccoon City. So there was this poster apparently that was in one of the remakes of uh, Marvin Branagh on a wall. And apparently somebody on Twitter, I don't know how they fucking pointed that out, that exact poster was up on the wall and it was just like, Okay, y'all then pointed that out. So that's in the movie. And then the itchy, tasty, written in blood on the mirror. I understand where that came in. Because I know there were some complaints among some of the fans. Like, there was in a diary. There wasn't written in blood on a mirror. Okay. <sighs> 
for film cra crafting, film crafting shit. For a video game, it makes sense that you found. Granted, I do love that diary. Because it literally starts off, we were playing poker. Some dude was cheating. He was a scumbag and fucked that dude. That's how it started off. And then it ends with number four, Itchy Tasty. It literally starts, we played poker with Scott the Guard and Elias and Steve. Steve the researcher. Steve was cheating and he was a scumbag. So it just basically is this diary that devolves into like, oh, there was an accident in the lab. I don't even know why I'm still working here. I didn't feed the, the dogs today and they were getting a little rowdy. Some of them escaped. I'm going to get my ass handed to you because they escaped. I'm, I, I'm like lackluster employee. Then like he's like scratching the swelling on his arm. A lump of rotten flesh fell off. What the hell is happening to me? Then he started... Fever gone, but itchy. Hungry, so eat doggy food. Itchy, itchy. Scott came. Ugly face, so killed him. Tasty. And then it goes number four. Itchy, tasty. And it's like, oh, the fuck did it happen? Oh my god. Like, when you saw that, I ain't gonna lie. When you read that diary, you were like, what the fuck? So... You can't do that in a movie. You're going to lose people if they have to sit there and read a wall of text because a video game you're playing, a movie you're watching. So it makes sense that somebody wrote Itchy Tasty in blood or the... Get a pen, Sideshow Bob! <laughs> they wrote it in blood or the beer, but it's the amount of fan service because there was a couple of other little fan service things that I'm like... Oh, I'm just going to keep it as serviceable. And... Why are there liquors? Why can't we have, like, hunters? Hunters don't get no love. And hunters were 50-fold for me way more fucking scary than liquors will ever be. Because if your health was too low, they would jump up and fucking claw your head off. And your head would go rolling down the thing. And with that, you die scream. And I'd be all freaked the fuck out. I remember one time, me and my best friend, we were switching off playing Resident Evil. We were coming up, we were, this was, my best friend was playing. She was playing the part right after, like, it became Hunterland. We came up from that kitchen. We didn't, weren't aware that there were some hunters in that hallway. We hear the ee sound that they made. We scream, and she is just blasting down the hallway with the, with the rocket launcher. Just blasting for, like, a good minute. And they had been dead, but we were there freaked out. So... No hunters, just liquors. Hunters are far more scary. Then somebody else pointed out that I was reading an article. What worried them was it looked like it was going to be like some feelings of dreads, like maybe with Leon and Claire when they were on can on screen, but it was looking more actiony when it came to Jill Wesker and I guess what is going to be the stars team. And they were like, that's kind of freaking them out because it, it wasn't really about, like, shooting your way out of shit. Especially the first, really kind of the first two games, you did get that, especially the first game. And I'll, since people talk shit about the original, which is actually my favorite, um, we'll, we'll focus more on the remake. And the remake, it, you, you were just in this place with limited resources and you couldn't just blast your way out of a fucking situation and it just to them it seemed like it was going to be a situation where you just shoot your way through a horde of zombies and it wasn't going to be any subtle nuance of like that that kind of this is how i put it for psychological horror psychological horror should be you are stuck strapped to a chair there's dynamite all over you there's a spider, a spider with a, a tarantula with a knife in front of you. It's a scorpion to the left of you with a with a bottle of acid. It's a poisonous snake to the right of you with like I don't know, like a syringe full of anthrax and somebody pointing a gun to the back of your head. And you know you fucked up to get in this situation, but it's gonna be even more fucked up to get out of it. That is what true psychological horror is you are in a fucked up situation that you caused but it's gonna be even more fucked up to get out of it and that's the kind of terror that you need to feel but resident evil isn't exactly psychological horror it's more of this overwhelming sense of dread 
And hang on just a second. Hopefully I'll be able to keep this thought. Hold up. All right, sorry about that again. Um, but we, I, I actually kind of remember it. Was. So when it comes to horror, I don't know what kind of horror we're gonna get. I don't know if we're gonna get the typical jump zombie schlock fest of uh, brain. Well, I wouldn't even be happy with brains, but I don't know if we're gonna get the schlock fest or if we're gonna get something fun or or something. But I'm still not going to the movies to see it. It's like. Somebody had something on Twitter not too long ago today where it was like they, they, where people were like something was wrong with some escalator and they were piling up and people were jumping off the side and stuff. Like that's going to be the movie theaters when all the Resident Evil fits. I'm not going to movies see that. Fuck that. It is not worth my health to go see this damn movie. I will catch this shit on the fucking flip when they put it on a damn streaming service because it ain't that fucking serious. So... If you want to go to movies, go to movies and see it. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it will be serviceable. I'm not even mad at it as a whole. But it ain't that real for me. I have said this before. I will say it again. And I'm sure when I catch it on the streaming service, I will probably be like, okay, it wasn't really worth me going, spending, risking my health, spending all kinds of money for lackluster fucking popcorn and shit to go see this bullshit so so and again i don't think it's gonna be bad i just don't i don't think i'll put it to you this way i don't think it'll be bad i just don't think it'll be worth my time to actually physically risk my health to go see sorry so moving on from resident evil movie there was some article that i looked at i didn't even read it all I, I might have read it all. I don't remember. This was like a couple of days ago. This is when I realized I needed to do a video game vlog. That basically somebody has said that they need to... Let me see if I still had this trash up. Because I was, I was kind of mad at this article. I was kind of really mad at this article. I was like, mm, uh, fuck you. I don't think I still have it. No. No, I don't. Damn it. That basically Silent Hill needed to be redone. It needed. It didn't need a sequel. It needed a reboot. Have you lost your natural fucking mind? Okay. Look, I was. I'm not gonna lie. I was a Silent Hill holdout for decades. I did not get into Silent Hill until 2007, when I finally broke down and watched. Silent Hill 2. Scared the shit out of me for a solid fucking week. I was scared of the dark for a solid damn week. That was the last time I was that scared. Like, I got scared of the dark when I watched um, House of Velez for a few days. But the last time I got scared where I couldn't get it together in the dark for a week was 2007 when I finally watched Silent Hill 2. There will never, ever ever be another Silent Hill 2. For all intents and purposes, there'll never be another PT. For for real, for real, if you want to break the shit down, it's never going to be another PT situation. Those two, like, those were the absolute greatest of Silent Hill. And PT was just like a 45 minute at best fucking teaser situation. It wasn't a full game and people still to this day be like, fucking Silent Hill. Why did we get shafted on Silent Hills? Because Konami is just a train wreck right now. So, so it needed to be, needs a reboot now. No. What we all need to collectively do is call a phone number for a hotline and get some fucking group grief counseling because it needs to, it needs to, we need to just let the shit go. It was glorious while it was going on. The shit is gone now. So let's just move on with our lives. It's, I really, I feel bad saying that, especially because I know y'all kids are just so damn starved for Silent Hill. But I would rather see the series, either they come out with whatever the fuck they planning on coming out with, and it damn well better be good, or we could get some, some more just, like, because I was like, thinking about the series as a whole, PT and 2 were the greatest. Um, 1, 3, and 4... One and three were just for me okay, even though I like three better than one. And four was hard to get. I remember watching it. I remember being nervous at some points watching it. 
but it is slow. It's paint dryingly slow. And I don't mean quick dry paint. I mean like regular paint that just dries real slow. It's paint dryingly slow. And it's interesting and it's creepy, but it takes a while to get to those interesting creepy parts. So, but it was still good. It's just real long. But, and then you have downpour, which I wasn't mad at downpour. It was just, it was all right. Like, if it was there and somebody was playing it and I ain't have nothing else better to do, I would watch it. But it was just all right. And homecoming was something. Like, oh, and that fucking truck dude. Oh, <sighs> no. And, and shattered memories. Like, I, I wasn't mad at Shattered Memories. I couldn't get through Shattered Memories, though, if I remember correctly. I could not get through Shattered Memories. I tried multiple times, and I was just like, I don't care about this. So, but Truck Dude can fuck off. Shattered mem Memories was just bleh. And Downpour in them was just, it was serviceable. So, I wasn't, I don't know. But just let it go. Oh, it's just got the ribs today. Oh, so, but, yeah. I just, uh, some name need to reboot it. Just leave that series alone. Just leave that series alone with his pain. Because it's, we never, it's never going to be another PT. And it's never, ever going to be another two. So, let the shit go. Just move on. Get some grief counseling. You'll feel better. So, now, Alien Cube came out switching gears alien cube which was the sequel to land of pain or the land of pain alien cube or the alien cube came out last week and i was like wait a minute because i saw a noxin had it and i was like the fuck wait alien cube and the thing is i was following the dude that made it Alice, Alice, alessandro guzzo i am sorry if i'm mispronouncing your name man I have been following him on Instagram for like a minute and he had been talking about the alien cube and I was I was still thinking like oh it'll be out it'll be out because I know he's the only one who works on that game he's he's like the sole developer we will get into all the goodness in a second so he had been showing like screenshots and stuff and I was like oh this looks like it's gonna be popping yay so it was fine and then I see Noxon was playing I'm like that ain't due out for like another I'm thinking it wasn't coming out for like another year or two and then I was like oh it's I went to look on Steam is out I'm like oh let me go watch this because it was such a surprise to me that Alien the Alien Cube came out I wanted to go back and watch Land of Pain to refresh myself of like the story and the lore and all that good stuff because House of Pain came out in 2017. That was a while ago. <laughs> so I want to say it was four or five years ago. I do not remember. Only thing I remember from Land of Pain is trying to play the demo and sucking at it because I got stuck somewhere. It was like, okay, we can't play first person games. We suck. And then I remember um, the end. Where basically he, the, the dude finally gets out of the situation that he was in. I do not remember all of the situation that he was in. He finally gets out because he was, it starts with him in like the early fall or something. He goes to this cabin and he's so excited to be at the cabin. He touch, there's this bubble that is near the cabin and he touches the bubble and he ends up in kind of like this fucked up world. And he's like running from monsters and hidden dangers and stuff. And he finally gets out of that situation. I don't remember how. And he goes back and his cabin burns to the ground. And I was like, oh, man, your cabin didn't burn down. You were all happy. You've been gone now. So that is all I remember of Land of Pain. I still need to go back and watch it. So Alien Cube is fucking gorgeous. Let me just say Alessandro Guzzo by himself made probably one of the most aesthetically gorgeous games i have ever fucking seen in my life the game is aesthetically beautiful i'm my mind was just fucking blasted the whole time um there was a lot more lore there basically you're the guy's nephew the guy whose cabin i just told you about his name is edgar his cabin he's the one whose cabin burns to the ground you're basically playing as his nephew and his nephew is trying to, like, basically, 
Edgar's, I don't know if Edgar's dead or disappeared. You get a letter from him saying that if you get this letter, it means I'm dead. Don't even worry about it. Take my shit. The only thing I can leave you is my scuzzy apartment because that was all I could afford. I never got married. I never had kids. You're the only person in my family that like means anything to me. So I'm just going to leave you my apartment. I didn't know you could bequeath somebody an apartment, but I guess. So like you're and you're you go looking around and you start finding all this weird stuff. And then at some point you find the alien cube, but you you end up back and forth between these two, like the real world and there's like this cult cause there's always a cult. You get, end up getting chased by these cult people who are trying to find the, the ancient gods or something. It's, it's deep, it's super deep. And I need, and in order, and I, because I hadn't seen Land of Pain in forever, I don't remember the lore cause it's been a thousand years and I need to go back and rewatch it so I can refresh my memory on the on the story but the ending is weird the ending is just kind of like the fuck so i think i want to go back and re-watch land of paid so i can get probably and then re-watch alien cube and get a better sense of what was going on i do know it had left me real fucking scared like there was a couple scenes where i was just like it was nail biting like oh my fucking god no 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 so it was it is it's good please go check out alien cube whether you watch it or play it please support this because i'm telling you this game is fucking amazing and yet again alessandro guzzo has has just fucking taken it to you and it was goddamn amazing so the alien cube is out and i'm so happy it was out and i'm glad i watched it and i'm glad i watched nox and play it it was super good and it was real fucking scary at parts so um i'm getting a little long-winded with the resident evil thing it took forever um what else did i want to mention there was a delay in Alyssa, the Alyssa game i forget the full name of it it's the game i backed on kickstarter um there was a delay, so it's supposed to come out, it was supposed to come out the end of, I want to say last month, but there was a weird delay, and it is supposed to come out toward the end of this month, I am still going to watch it when it comes out, so there's just a delay on that, um, I wanted to talk about case 36, Henrietta Kedward, I will talk about Project Nightmares. I will talk about Project Nightmares another time. It was, that was, I ain't gonna lie. I liked Project Nightmares. I love the voice actor. I remember the voice actor contacting me because he was the voice actor for Today is My Birthday. I had no beef with this man. He, I love his voice acting. I am not even gonna front because his voice actor be having me dying at first. It was one part in Project Nightmares where he, something had happened and I was, he and the guy that was the character that the voice actor was doing said something and I was on the fucking floor. It just had me in tears laughing. And then it was some other part on that where Noxon kept dying, the, the Henrietta Kedward lady kept biting his face off, but she would have this little laugh and every time he, his face got bit off and she would do that laugh, I would be on the damn ground in tears. Ah, uh, I will review that one later. I'm just not in the mood to, get, to try to remember that one, but that was good too. I I enjoyed it. It wasn't. It was it was that campy fun kind of like oh I can watch this and laugh and have a good time. It wasn't like serious. And sometimes you want something that's not like all serious. You sometimes you want something fun and silly. So. That is all I have for video game vlog right now. I'm sorry the Resident Evil thing took longer, but I'm not I'm not mad at that movie, but at the same token, I'm not trying to go see that right out from Jump Street. Um, the thing with Silent Hill, it, grief counseling, you'll feel a lot better. Just, just, just accept that it's gone. Just accept the shit is gone and we're all gonna move on and it's fine. Yes, I would love to see something amazing come from Konami too, cause, but they're just happy with their gems and pink and pachinko machines and what the fuck ever and, and mobile whatever the fuck. 
I ain't, they, they got to do what they got to do for their bottom line. I don't give a shit like that. So, and go check out the Alien Cube. It was, it was, ah, say magnifique, man. I, or whatever hell you would say that in, in Italian. But that is all I have. And I will see y'all again at another point. All right? Later. <laughs>